Welcome to the Texas Instruments Emulator Showcase. I am John Stevenson and with me I have Raphael Souza. Today we will be discussing the various JTAG emulators available for the TI Embedded Processor portfolio. For those of you who are new to TI's embedded software and tools ecosystem, it is an area that TI has invested heavily in over the years. The ecosystem is comprised of runtime software including real-time operating systems like TI RTOS, embedded Linux, and a multitude of software packages. There are development tools including the Code Composer Studio integrated development environment, JTAG emulators, and development boards such as launch pads and evaluation modules. On top of this, there is a rich community providing expertise, turnkey solutions, product support, and training. The presentation today will focus on JTAG emulators. JTAG emulators are very useful for embedded software developers. A JTAG emulator is a hardware debug tool that is connected to your PC and the embedded processor that is present on your development board. The example above shows a high performance XDS560 V2 emulator that can be connected to the laptop via its USB interface and to the development board via JTAG cable. Note that many of our low-cost development boards such as launch pads have built-in JTAG emulation so that you do not have to purchase a standalone JTAG emulator until you migrate to your own custom board. JTAG emulators allow you to have direct access to device internals such as the application program, memory, and registers. They also allow you to control device execution such as run or halt the application, single step, and break execution. All of this can be visualized and controlled via a software development environment such as Code Composer Studio. TI offers a wide variety of JTAG emulators to suit different needs and budgets. We carry entry-level XDS100 class products all the way up to high-end trace receivers like the XDS Pro Trace and everything in between. It is important to carefully consider your JTAG solution as it will have a significant impact on your debug experience. This table shows the part number for each recommended emulator organized by device family. As you can see the recommended solution varies depending on the embedded processor you are using. For example, an XDS100 product is a good choice for our 28X real-time microcontrollers. For Cortex-M based devices, we recommend an XDS200 class product. And for high-end processors and multi-core devices, we recommend an XDS560 solution. Feel free to refer to this table when making your emulator selection. Remember to check which JTAG header will be present on your board and then ensure that the JTAG emulator you select has a compatible connector. Please visit the JTAG emulator website for more information. Now let's take a look in a little more detail at each class of JTAG emulator. The MSP430 Flash Emulation Tool, or FET, is designed specifically for MSP430 ultra low power microcontrollers. It has a USB interface and supports both JTAG and spy by wire debug protocols. This product has a cost of $115. Next is XDS100. This is a low cost entry level solution. It is a good product to start development with, but typically you will want to upgrade to a higher end product as your application grows. The XDS100 is available in three different models, each supporting a different set of JTAG connectors. XDS100 products are available for the low cost of $79 and have the added bonus of working with a free license of Code Composer Studio. XDS200 is a new class of JTAG emulator. It is a mid-range product that fits between the entry-level XDS100 and the high-performance XDS560. It supports a USB interface, although Ethernet versions are also available from some of our partners. The XDS200 comes with a selection of JTAG connectors. This product has a cost of $295 and is an excellent choice for microcontroller devices. XDS560 V2 emulators are our high-performance JTAG solution. We offer two models a bus powered USB model and one that offers both USB and Ethernet connections. Note that the Ethernet enabled model includes an extra adapter to support the TI 60 pin JTAG header. 
This header is common on many of our multi-core boards. Both of these models incorporate a system trace receiver with 128 megabytes of storage. System trace is an advanced feature available on high-end processors that enables you to detect system bottlenecks by tracking bus and peripheral activity, benchmarking data throughput, and even the ability to add custom instrumentation. These products start at $995 and are recommended for those working on high-end processors that have large amounts of memory or for those who have the need for system trace. The XDS Pro Trace is our top-of-the-line trace receiver. While all of our XDS products will support reading trace data that has been stored in the on-chip trace buffer, or ETB, the XDS Pro Trace is the only one that can capture processor trace that is exported from the device to pins, enabling you to capture huge amounts of trace data. This product is recommended for customers who need to capture processor trace. This is most common in our multi-core C6000 devices. It also includes a system trace receiver. The Axios Pro Trace is available for $3,495. We have covered our JTAG solutions ranging from the entry level XDS100 all the way up to our XDS Pro Trace receiver. I am now going to hand over control to Raphael, who is going to perform a brief demonstration that highlights the differences in performance between our XDS100, 200, and 560 products. Thank you, John. As he mentioned, for the demonstration today, I will do a performance comparison between the different emulator classes, XDS100, XDS200, and XDS560V2. I will measure the time taken to connect, initialize and load code to the target processor. Also, I will show the memory browser and step operations. The setup is comprised of the emulator under test connected to a dedicated USB port in my PC to avoid any possible delays if I use the USB hub. And the target board is a big bone with an AM35X processor and an external emulator connector. This is the main Code Composer Studio screen, and as you can tell from my simple project, it contains a 256 kilobytes data array placed in the dot data section. The CCS debugger is already launched, so the time measurement will only account for the operations entirely dependent on the emulator. Two times will be taken, the connection time, which initializes the processor by running a gel script, and load time, the actual time taken to transfer the executable from the PC to the target. We will measure the time with the system clock. It is not the most accurate, but it will work for this demo. Now, let's connect to the core and wait until the JavaScript finishes. Keep an eye on the clock. Pretty fast, roughly 8 seconds. Now let's load the code. Again, keep an eye on the clock. One of the reasons the code is taking a while to be loaded is because the target processor is an AM35X. If you recall from John's presentation, the entry-level option for this family is the XDS200. Another detail is that the JTAG data throughput is slower than USB or Ethernet connections, as the JTAG has a large amount of handshake. It took roughly 45 to 50 seconds to load the code. Let's now run to main. We can also do single step and have a few of the performance.
Now I will close the debug session and switch the emulator to the XDS200. For the benefit of time, I will go offline and return. Now I have the board connected to the XDS200 emulator. Let's connect to the core again and wait until the JavaScript finishes. Keep an eye on the clock. Faster than the XDS100, although connecting is very fast in both cases. Now let's load the code. Again, keep an eye on the clock. <laughs> A lot faster than the XS100. It took around 5 seconds. Let's run to main. And do some single step. You can tell it's faster than the XS100. Now I will close the debug session and switch the emulator to the XDS 560 V2. For the benefit of time, I am going offline again. Now I have the board connected to the XDS 560 V2 emulator. Let's connect to the core again and wait until the JavaScript finishes. Keep an eye on the clock. Pretty much the same speed as the XDS200. Now let's load the code. Again, keep an eye on the clock. Wow, instantaneous again. Maybe one second. Let's run to main again. and do some single step. That concludes the demonstration. I hope this webinar gave you useful information and a few of the performance of our emulation products. John and I thank you for your time today and hope to see you in our next webinar.